We're joined by the investigative journalist and co-author of Looking for Madeline, that's Robin Swan. Uh, Robin Swan, welcome to you. Uh, I say a dig on a sniffer dog, I think that probably underestimates the police presence there. Our uh, local source on the ground says anything approaching 100 German police officers on the scene. So it sounds like a pretty significant operation. It, it does indeed, although there's nothing in this case that has ever uh, done uh, quietly or in, in moderation, it seems, sometimes. The, uh, as you know, this suspect, Christian B, emerged back on June the 3rd when the German police uh, came forward with an actual plea to the public to help them identify uh, possible new leads in connection with the man they characterize as the prime suspect. And they were hoping uh, to get some leads on a cell phone call that was made to Christian B's cell phone on the night that Madeline disappeared there in Praia de Luz. And as far as I know, they have been uh, inundated with leads, um, some 16 specifically relating to the phone and a couple of thousand, as far as I know, related to other matters in relation to Christian B. So we don't actually know why the search is taking place today um, or what they're exactly looking for. As your reporter said, are they looking in for something specifically to do with Madeline's disappearance or are they looking for some other kind of incriminating evidence about the main suspect, Christian B, to do with any of the other cases in which he's now been implicated? Yeah. Hans Christian Wolters, the, the lead German prosecutor in this, Robin, uh, says they have concrete evidence, not forensic evidence. Um, that's that division, that, that, that strange dichotomy. We've got the, we're sure there's concrete evidence linking him to a murder, uh, but we don't have the forensic evidence. I mean, when they start digging, you wonder whether the second element of that might be what they're after. Oh, you, you, certainly, you certainly do. Um, the police sources I've spoken with, um, some closely linked to the BKA, have, have, have said to me that, you know, these, this prosecutor is not the kind of man with a reputation for speaking wildly or out of turn. His use of his phrase, concrete evidence and his conviction, his seeming conviction, that this suspect is involved and that Madeline is dead. Um, it, they say he's not the kind of man who would be saying that loosely. Um, that said, they clearly don't have what they need to go forward with a prosecution on this case. And that is what they so desperately need, um, both to bring some kind of closure to the McCann family, if this is indeed the case, or, and because if they are going to prosecute anyone in connection with Madeline's disappearance, the time uh, is rather running short um, because of the, the statute of limitations on this kind of crime in Portugal where the crime took place. Yeah, which reminds us, doesn't it, of how you've got different jurisdictions involved here. Uh, Christian B may be in a prison in Germany, but we had uh, the Portuguese who were digging around some wells in recent weeks. You've got the uh, Scotland Yard who are saying, as far as we're concerned, it's still a missing persons inquiry. Uh, ultimately, whose, whose jurisdiction are we in here? I'm guessing, yes, OK, crime on the face of it appears to have been committed in Portugal with a British victim, but the, the individual who's the chief suspect is there in Germany. Yes, and I think we have to be very careful about this. It would seem to me it's a, it, it would be a crime prosecutable in Portugal because that's where it seems to have taken place. Uh, but we don't know. And one of the problems in this case at the moment is the Germans' concern that Christian B might be allowed out of prison because he is only in prison at the moment on a drugs charge, although he has been convicted in connection with the rape of a 72-year-old American woman in a violent rape. Uh, he is appealing that conviction on the basis of the fact that uh, his lawyers claim he was extradited and uh, only on the drugs charge, and therefore he cannot be imprisoned in Germany on the basis of, this, of the fresh conviction on the rape case. So all of that legal uh, tangle has to be sorted out before the prosecution can go forward. Robin, you don't need me to tell you how much public interest over the years there has been in this, in this investigation. But it, and obviously, you, sometimes you get a lot of, uh, as far as the family are concerned, ad, advance, ad, adverse internet uh, commentary that goes with this. But you've hinted at this already. W what is the prospect, do you think, of a story like this, you know, leading the bulletins today, actually yielding uh, a piece of information from a member of the public um, that actually can lead to something definitive in this case? Well, long ago, when this case started, 
the reason Madeline's name became well known to all of us is because the men and women who run uh, the best uh, organizations in the world for finding missing children have always believed that getting a child's name and face out there is the best hope of turning up in fresh information. That remains the case today. Little bits of information can come in. Um, it has always been said that there is someone who knows what happened to Madeline. And relationships change over time, um, uh, loyalties change over time, and even people's memories of what they saw can be you know, sort of assisted by seeing something over and over again. So in as much as this is terribly difficult for Madeline's family to go through this time and time again, the little bits of information may still help find her, find, find what happened to Madeline. And that's ultimately the most important thing. Robin Swan, good to talk to you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Colin.